and when they're in beast form, the beauty records the lines. And then we have Fred Tatashore, who plays this mo amazing monsters. Um, he overdubs them, so you get the harmonic effect of the male and female voice right. at the same time. Which so, is like the symbolic Beauty and the Beast theme yep. in the voiceover performance. Itself, yeah. And um, whoever records... It, it's difficult enough for us to have to match the Japanese motion capture mm -hmm. bodies then you have to match the Japanese rhythm mm -hmm. then you have to match for the beasts the female has to match those two and then Fred has to come in on top of that and match the female performance mm -hmm. so it's you know it's tough more and, and more layers and especially things like laughing and crying mm -hmm. where there's definitely a, a personal rhythm involved right that's tough because yeah exactly like, like you said there's a rhythm that's not it's hard. You have to listen to it over and over and over again before you can get it. And Fred is really incredibly, really impressed me because he. By the time we were, by the time we were, were winding up with the with the Beast uh, voiceover recording, he can hear it once, and then he said, "Okay, can you almost, record it?" And he yeah. can do, get it almost perfectly. It was yeah. really unbelievable. Yeah. And then with the help of Justin Langley, our engineer here, a little slipping and sliding with the. Um, yeah, he's our magi magi magician. Yeah. And the technical magician. Very impressive, and. Uh, so yeah, I guess your your answer is uh, I guess the Be Beast Beauty and the Beast voiceover performance. And I'm well, I could go on and on, Ryan. You know, mm -hmm. there is the Liquid Ocelot thing going on, yeah. and I mean that's just a very very strong performance. And how how could I not say that Snake is one of my favorites? Last mm -hmm. time Ryan asked me who some of my favorite characters <laughs> were from. You can't say uh, Snake. MGS1. He wouldn't let me say snake, but he didn't say that today. I love working with David, and I love um, the give and take we have with each <laughs> other with the snake character, and it's just it's just really a pleasure right. to be working with him again. Yeah, and he's he's so passionate about it, which makes it even better, you know. And to have all the other originals, you know, back too, or most of them, you know, the Otacon, Merrill, Naomi, Campbell. You know, Raiden and and they Vamp love it, from yeah. another game, and they love just, coming in. They're and, great. Yeah, it's like a big family reunion. Every and time. Vamp is one of the creepiest characters I think I've ever yeah. worked with. He's he's just under your skin. <laughs> another one of the um, challenges is that for me and for the actors is we're so used to these characters at a certain age, mm -hmm. right? And because this is later in time. To make sure that um, oop, can't say that name. To make sure <laughs> Naomi right. sounds, you know, older. Right, than nine she years did before. older. Right. You know, it's it's just to make sure that they all stay in sync. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's been the challenging part is keeping it keeping it true to the Japanese as well as keeping it true to MGS one, MGS two, MGS three, and portable ops because there's lots of references to them. There's um, some flashback scenes. There's there's lines that are taken from those 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 previous games. And sometimes those weren't always translated accurately, and they don't always sound natural right. when you put it in when you throw it back into a new game. And there is a particular line that we had to just change the order of two words mm -hmm. um, to make it dramatically play better in English right. than it did in Japanese. Which um, which we we might that 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 line actually might appear in our next trailer. So you can look forward oh, for that. There's nice. a little hint there. Nice and. Um, but I think people forgive us because there's no way we could have recorded it exactly as it was no. in the original. And that's something you just have to forgive. And uh, and I think Mr. Coachman's have to forgive me for that too. <laughs> so uh, speaking of returning characters, we have uh, Meryl, who's of course in Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, voiced by Debbie Mae West, who has agreed to join the program yes. in an upcoming session. So I've only got about another week here in L.A., but she's going to be coming in a, in a few days. And Yeah, she should be here next week. Yeah, and she agreed to come on the on the program. So if you have any questions for Debbie Mae West, for Meryl, and uh, to send them into our comment box, I've got it on the on the blog site on the bottom of the page. You can see where you, you can uh, connect to the mailbox and send in your questions, and I'll get those to Meryl and ask her those on the air. And uh, just no questions about... Anything? Don't don't ask her questions. She can't answer about MGS4. But now let's let's talk about MGS1 and and her experience because she loves that game, and that's part of the reason why I wanted her on the program is because she, she's so passionate about it. She got a uh, Meryl action figure when we did the first game, 
that she still has up in her kitchen that's like on her windowsill yeah. right by her sink. And uh, she came to my house for an event not too long ago and brought the action figure with her. Not that she like carries this doll around with her everywhere she goes, <laughs> but um, it was pretty funny because she wanted to show some of the people that were there the old action figure, mm-hmm. which is pretty neat. Yeah, she, so she's very passionate about it, and it would be a pleasure to have her on the program. So send those questions in. And uh, actually, we might have to go because we got lunch. We do have lunch. And I, gotta I think get it's to, ready. And I got to get to Bioshock, too. And I've got about 30 no, minutes. No, Ryan, hands off the video games. <laughs> what? This is, this is uh, I got to get my mind off of Metal Gear for a while. Bioshock looks pretty great. It sounds great. It looks pretty great and it sounds great. They've got some fabulous, um, I don't know the name of the main character in it. That's um, taking the player through. Oh, Atlas? Atlas, yeah. Or Otacon, was it? No, it's Atlas. No, yeah. not Otacon. <laughs> Octagon? No. Uh, um, yeah, the, yeah Atlas, Atlas has a fabulous voice. I don't know who that actor is. I think he's Australian. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe I, I heard that they did all the recording in Australia. It sounds like it. For that game. But he's got a, he's cool. He's really neat. Yeah, they did an excellent job. So it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, kind of comparing, what, you know, how they're pr- approaching their game and how we're approaching our game. And Completely different. Totally different styles. Both good. Yep. And uh, yep. so, yeah, it's, it's cool. I, I got 30 minutes. Chris, we can get a little Bioshock in. Oh, okay. Let's, let's go. Let's get Bioshocked. Let's go. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on the program, Chris. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you, everybody. I, I kind of hope this is the last time you're on here because I, I, we need to get back and we need to finish this game, but I kind of hope this isn't the last time so we can... Uh, I'm here. All right, because uh, I think we'll be back for some pickups, but again, thank you so much for 55 days of excellent... 55 days? <laughs> of excellent oh direction on Metal Gear Solid 4. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye.